Hi guys, Lysentia here from the Rift Forums and Igneous1 on YouTube. Welcome to the first in my series of Rift Warfront guides. Today we're going to be looking at Codex, a Warfront available to all players starting at level 20. We've got a lot of information to cover, so let's get started. Alright, before we get into strategy, let's take a moment to go over the layout of the map. Compared to Black Garden and Library of the Rune Masters, Codex seems very large, and is the first Warfront map that allows you to use a mount. If you're level 20 and still don't have a mount yet, you definitely want to get that squared away before you queue for this Warfront. Starting with the graveyards, the Guardian Graveyard is in the southwest corner of the map, and the Defiant Graveyard is in the southeast corner of the map. Scattered throughout the middle and highlighted here by yellow circles are four flags. To the north we have Codex, west closest to the Guardian Graveyard is Statue of Thontic, east nearest the Defiant Graveyard is Translation Scope, and at the bottom of the map in the pool across the bridge is Vault. Finishing our tour of the map layout are the power-up orbs. There's an orb near each flag, a red orb is north of Codex, west of Thontic, east of Scope in the Dragon Skull, and finally a blue orb is just a few steps south of the flag at Vault. Red power-up orbs increase your attack power and spell power for 2 minutes, and the blue orbs increase your run speed for approximately 10 to 15 seconds. Just before we head into the strategy section, let's talk about points. Every 5 seconds, your team will earn points based on the flags they control. Codex is worth 5 points, the other 3 flags are worth 3 points each. In addition, your team will earn 1 point for every enemy player they kill. The first team to 1000 points wins the match. Knowing all of that leads us to the most basic strategy for this map, which is often referred to as Codex Plus One. This involves capturing and holding Codex in the flag closest to your graveyard. For Guardians, you would have Codex and Thontic, and for Defiant, you would have Codex and Scope. This earns 8 points from flags every 5 seconds, and cuts the other team's point gain from flags to 6. Now that's all great if yours is the team that managed to get Codex, and even if you did manage to get Codex, if you rest on your laurels thinking you're just going to defend for the rest of the match, you might be in for a shock. It doesn't take much to turn the tables on a lead generated by a Codex plus one strategy. What we need is a plan to fall back on if we can't get Codex, and it would be nice if we had a plan to put in motion to help secure victory even if we do get Codex. To illustrate that plan, we're going to get rid of the maps and icons and jump directly into a match in progress. Here we are in a match as a Guardian, where the Defiant have executed the Codex plus one approach. They have Codex and Scope, we have Statue and Vault. I know Guardians have been pushing on Codex since the beginning of the match to no avail, so let's put Plan B into action. Riding over the land bridge, I see a teammate ahead of me on their way to Assault Scope. Our goal now is not necessarily to capture and hold Scope for the rest of the match, but by assaulting it and waiting to make sure the Defiant don't immediately retake it, we are doing what is sometimes called pressuring or pushing on the node. This serves to tie up enemy forces away from Codex, and also cuts enemy point gains from Scope. While a flag is in a contested state, it is not earning points for either team. This means that while Scope is contested, Guardians are earning 6 points from 2 flags, and Defiant are earning 5 points from Codex. You can see now that we've held off the Defiant long enough to take control of Scope. Guardians are now earning 9 points from 3 flags, and Defiant are earning 5 points from Codex. As you're about to see, we don't hold it for long, so let's consider exactly what we've accomplished. When we assaulted the flag, it entered a contested state for 30 seconds where it wasn't earning points for either team. After it flipped to Guardian Control, we held off the Defiant for 22 seconds, earning our team 12 points. When the Defiant assaulted it, it went back into a contested state for 30 seconds. All told, we cut off Defiant Point gains from that flag for a minute and 22 seconds, which was long enough for the Guardians to gain a slight lead. In addition, we also tied up at least 4 Defiant players who were unable to assist at Codex. The Defiant have responded to our obnoxious behavior by moving over and assaulting Vault, so I'm going to go over and see if I can't do something about that. Vault is a notorious camping spot for stealth rogues, so I want to be aware of that as I approach. I have a teammate arriving ahead of me which is good news, and our team also just assaulted Codex which is even better news. Remember that it takes 5 seconds to assault or defend a node, so I'm going to leave my teammate to deal with the lone Defiant for a moment while I move up and try to defend this flag. Job done! So now I help my teammate finish off this Defiant and we can take a moment to look around and see where to go next. Remember that we're not talking about clinging to a Codex plus one strategy. We want to be assessing the field and pushing on nodes where the enemy is weak. 
I had someone comment in one of my earlier videos that I spent too much time standing around watching things happen and not enough time fighting. Here's an example of a time where taking a moment to observe saves me a trip to the graveyard. A lone guardian has jumped down off the rocks at Codex and is quickly swarmed under by a group of about 5 Defiant. This group of Defiant could either turn and head my way towards Vault, or they could proceed back up to Codex. As soon as I see them heading up to Codex, I quickly type a warning to my team in Raid Chat. Note that I'm not giving my team instructions, I'm simply conveying information. 6 Inc. Codex means 6 enemy players are incoming to Codex, and it gives my team a heads up so that they can prepare to receive the incoming enemy players. Taking the time to assess the situation has also allowed me to see the 3 Defiant players currently on their way to us at Vault, and I can also see 2 Guardian players heading up the land bridge toward us as well. Note that I'm not here defending Vault because it's more important than Codex. I'm defending Vault because this is where I happen to be. These three Defiant players headed the right way to the graveyard are three fewer Defiant players to pressure Codex, and as you can see, someone from the Guardian team has also managed to sneak down and assault Scope. When one team controls all four flags, it is referred to as a four cap, and it can be a very difficult thing for the other team to recover from. We already had a lead, and now that the enemy team's point gain from flags is cut to zero, that lead is only going to grow. I've skipped about a minute forward into the match and I'm arriving at Codex for the first time since the match started. I see one Defiant player surrounded by a number of friendly players so I'm going to help finish him off and then take a look at what's going on elsewhere on the map. A quick glance at both Thontic and Scope shows a large number of Defiant pushing on Thontic and Scope is pretty much undefended. Remember that the goal here is to win the match, not chase red names. They take Thontic, we take Scope. I'm about to make a mistake here. Remember when I said we're not here to chase red names? In my zeal to rush over and help my teammates, I overextend from scope, and when the fighting is done, I turn around to see the Defiant about to defend the flag. In this particular match, it turns out to not be a critical error, but the scoreboard keeps track of enemy kills near a control point for a reason. Whenever possible, you want to restrict the fighting to locations that matter. In a close match, my decision to rush over and join a fight in the middle of nowhere could have cost my team the match. We managed to clear out the first wave of Defiant and this brings me to an important point. As you can see, we have another wave of Defiant pushing on us at scope and it's very important in situations like this not to tunnel vision on the fighting and ignore the objectives. I saw an opportunity during a break in the action to assault the flag, so I took it. I've seen countless situations where people had an opportunity to assault or defend a flag and they chose instead to carry on fighting and that can prove very costly. The remainder of this match played out with all flags changing hands repeatedly. By continuing to focus on hitting the enemy where they were weakest, we managed to preserve the lead we established early in the match. This strategy is ideally suited to those situations where gaining and keeping control of Codex is proving difficult. This could be because the other team's composition is better suited to defending Codex than yours, or because your team is just getting outplayed. The idea here is not to go out of your way to avoid fights, but to pick your battles intelligently. There's still plenty of opportunity for fighting with this more dynamic strategy, but remember that daily quests and the bonuses for winning the match don't say anything about damage done or killing blows. That brings us to the end of this guide. I hope the information I've presented has been useful to you and that you're able to apply it successfully to your own matches. If you have any comments about this guide, feel free to leave them below, and as always, remember to subscribe to my channel. More guides will be coming soon. Thanks guys!